In this demo, we're going to look at using APG labels for sharing contracts while restricting connectivity. Labels are attributes of ACI APGs. APG labels are made so that you can facilitate reusing contracts, allowing you to select which APGs can consume or provide contracts from other APGs. In that way, they allow you just more granularity in the object model. When there is a contract between multiple EPGs, you can use labels to group those EPGs that can communicate and restrict those that cannot. In this sense, the labels can be defined to select which EPGs we can consume contracts with or which EPGs we can provide contracts to. You can see a quick XML of a description of a EPG where we are providing a label named blue and we are consuming label named blue as well. This means that we will be able to communicate with EPGs that provide contracts uh, and EPGs that consume contracts if those EPGs have the label blue. Labels can be configured under the EPG policy tab in the uh, EPG label section of the GUI. In this case, for instance, we're showing an example for a client EPG where we have consumed uh, contracts with other EPGs and we will be able to communicate with those EPGs that we consume contracts from if they have label green. That's what this configuration allows. And this is the XML representation of the same configuration where we see the object, consume label, the name green, and the tag which is matching this particular color code. Let's look at an example of when this can be useful. Let's imagine this as a scenario where we have four EPGs, client one and client two, server one and server two. Our policy should be such that client one can communicate with client server one and client two can communicate with server two. However, client one cannot communicate with server two and vice versa, client two cannot communicate with server one. In a traditional scenario, we will use two contracts, client to server one and client to server two, allowing all connectivity in this particular case. What we can see is that if we use a single contract, we're breaking our policy. If both server one and server two provide the same default contract, then now by consuming that contract, client one can communicate with server two and vice versa, client two can communicate with server one, which is not the desired intent. If we, however, want to just keep one single contract for representing this particular type of communication, we can actually use labels. We can select label green for client one and server one and label blue for client two and server blue. This is essentially creating a sort of zoning. We're defining a green zone and a blue zone where although all EPGs can be part of the same application network profile, and the EPGs are using a single contract, we're actually restricting who can communicate with who. Client one will only be able to communicate with EPGs that have the same label, label green, and vice versa, or similarly, client two will only be able to communicate with EPGs that have label blue. Effectively, we will see in the demo, we have all these EPGs on the same application network profile consuming the same contract, but we will see that we can restrict communication, or rather isolate, and make sure that client one server one cannot communicate with client two server two. Let's look at the demo. Here we are logged into APIC and we can see our application network profile, application profile client server. We can see that we have a single contract that has a default filter for allowing all traffic between clients and server. We have client one, client two, I'm sorry, client one, server one, client two and server two. They're all sharing the same bridge domain and the same subnet and we're using DHCP to allocate IP addresses dynamically to all these endpoints. We have a contract with client to server with a single sub that allows all connectivity. If we look at the policy configuration, we can see that server one and client one have been configured with green label. So server one will communicate with those EPGs to which it provides a contract if those EPGs have the green label. That will be the case for client one, where we will have the reverse and we will consume contracts from those EPGs that have label green. Similarly, client two only communicates with those EPGs that it consumes contract from if they have label blue. Therefore, client two will not be able to communicate with server one because there will be no label match and we need to match at least one label with our configuration. 
server 2 it's only providing communication to those EPGs that it has a provided relationship contract with uh, label blue. We have now the possibility of influencing this, but let's look at how this is working. Here we have a client 1, and client 1 can communicate to 109. This is server 1. That communication is allowed. However, it cannot communicate with server 2. That communication is not allowed. Then again, we're using the same contract. We go to client 2, we can see the reverse is the case. We cannot communicate with 101, but we can communicate with 102. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to influence this to show that this is working by adding a label. This is us ECS just sending the following uh, JSON on uh, uh, the API. So here, for instance, we have uh, a quick uh, JSON to add a cons consume label. Uh, actually, we want to use a provided label. So we're going to add to server 2 EPG the following label. So we'll also be allowing communication to those uh, EPGs that have label green. As soon as we do that, we'll see that client 1 will be able to communicate. So we've added the label green. And we have enabled communication. If we remove that label, will break communication again. So this is effectively allowing us to create songs within a particular application profile. So we can actually make an optimal use of contracts, reusing the same contract for different songs. In our case, we're zoning client 1 and client uh, 2 with the respective server EPGs. Thanks for watching.